In this organic chemistry tutorial screencast, we're going to look at the structure of elucidation of um, a molecule given infrared mass spec carbon and proton NMR data. The first piece of data we're going to look at is the infrared spectrum shown at the top here. So we want to look at a couple distinct regions um, to basically help us determine what major functional groups are present in the molecule. As noted, you see there's um, this region 3500 to 2200 um, at the left of the spectrum. And notice the shape. We have this sort of broad absorption that sort of merges down here, goes back up. So really what this is is telling us that there's an OH present and the typical um, CH stretches present. The fact that this OH is sort of merged into the CH region along with this peak at 1709, which is the carbonyl region, indicates to us that the IR has a carboxylic acid functional group. And again, the atoms needed for that are a carbon doubly bonded to oxygen and a carbon sigma bonded to an OH group. And so we know that this fragment is present from the IR based on the carbonyl coupled with this OH that's sort of merged into the CH stretching. So we're definitely dealing with a carboxylic acid. So we can abbreviate that CO2H. So those present um, in the IR and the carbonyl is one degree of unsaturation. So that's going to be important for us as well. Let's move on now to the mass spectrum shown below. And it's telling us that the parent ion, M plus, is um, 116 mass units. So the important thing that we're given as well here is this molecular formula. And again, we want to use that to determine the total degrees of unsaturation present. So we revert back to the CnH2n plus 2. That's the general formula for an alkane functional group. In this case we have six carbons. We put that into the equation here. We end up with six times two is 12 plus two, so 14. So six carbons should have 14 hydrogens. And the, the oxygen neither add nor subtract to the hydrogen count. So what we can do is take what it should be, subtract what it is, and we get H2. And we know that a degree of unsaturation chemically is equivalent to a molecule of H2. So here we get one degree of unsaturation. So the reason it's important to go through that exercise is because um, it, it now corroborates what we saw in the IR uh, above here. So we already know from the IR there's a carbonyl. The mass spec molecular formula tells us there's one degree of unsaturation and we know it resides in that acid functional group. So of the C6H12O2 with one degree of unsaturation, we know that from the acid has C H O2 with one degree of unsaturation, that's your acid. We are left with C5H11. And that that collection of atoms has no degrees of unsaturation. So basically every carbon in there is going to be sp3 hybridized. Let's move on to the C13 NMR spectrum. Again, it's taken in deuterochloroform, and that peak is shown here, so we don't consider that. Let's look at the proton decoupled spectrum on the bottom here. Again, we have a chemical shift range from 0 to 220 in parts per million. And let's just go ahead and count the peaks. We have one two, three, four, 
So we have four unique type of carbon. Let's examine what this top spectrum above it is telling us. It's called DEPT, D-E-P-T, which stands for Distortionless Enhancement by Polarization Transfer. And if you look, you have this CH2, which points down. So a methylene group is pointing down. A CH3, a methyl group, points up. A CH methine group points up. So how do we interpret that? Let's go back to this first peak that we counted. And if we, if we look up above, we see that peak is pointing up. So it is either a CH3 or a CH group. Now if we go to the second peak and we go up, there's nothing there. That carbon has no hydrogens, so it doesn't show up. The third peak we go up, notice now this, this peak is pointing down. So what that's telling us is that carbon is a CH2 group. So again, these squiggly lines are the point of attachment to other fragments when we're putting the structure together. And then finally, the fourth carbon, let's go up. We don't see any peak in this region. So that also has to be C with no hydrogens. And at this point, we can, we can review where do different functional groups show up on the carbon NMR. Again, I would say between zero and 100, you're really dealing with sp3 hybridized carbon for the most part. Then everything above that, up to 220 here, this is sp2 hybridized carbon. And we already know from what we determined up here in, in from the IR, this carbon from the acid is sp2 hybridized. So therefore, we can say that that carbon, because it lies in that region, belongs to the acid fragment. These three remaining unique carbons are all sp3 hybridized. So one thing I want to connect back with is, is up here, we have to account for five carbons, but there's only three remaining. So that tells us, so there is symmetry. Meaning that some of the remaining carbons have to be equivalent. Let's go down now to the proton NMR. Again, chloroform is the solvent that the sample is run in. Let's just count the unique number of peaks. So we have one, two, we have three unique type of hydrogen. Notice the chemical shift of this one at 12. And it says exchanges with D2O. So we're going to assign that one to this proton bonded to the acid. Protons bonded to heteroatoms, such as oxygen and nitrogen, can exchange with D2O. So the hydrogen basically becomes a deuterium. Now if we look, we have the remaining uh, two peaks to account for. Notice that the multiplicity of them, they are both singlets. So what does that tell us? What can we infer from that? That the neighboring carbons have no hydrogens. So these sets are isolated from one another, that the neighboring carbons have no hydrogens, there's no splitting. So if you were to measure this in terms of determining the integration,
you take out a ruler and measure that distance. The ratio of that distance has to account for the remaining hydrogens in the molecule. So again, if we, if we look back up here, we've already taken one out of the 12 to assign to this acid here. So of the remaining two sets that we're looking at now, we have to account for 11. And if you measure these distances, you'll find that the ratio is going to be 2 to 9. So that gets us our total proton count. So obviously a carbon can't have more than 3 hydrogens if it's in a molecule. If it has four, then it's methane, and it, it wouldn't look like this. So if we take nine divided by three, that gets us three. So we can say that that belongs to three equivalent CH3 groups. Two can belong to CH2 which matches what we found up here in the, in the carbon NMR. So we're dealing with a CH2 or methylene fragment. And remember this initial peak where it said was CH3 or CH? Well, it has to be a CH3 to match up with these CH3s here. And then we have this remaining carbon that has no hydrogens bonded to it. So at this point, we're going to put all these fragments together and finish our structural elucidation. So we have the acid that's bonded to something. So we're going to bond it to the CH2 group. So there's our CH2 group. Now we have three remaining methyl groups, and we're going to bond that to the terminal carbon here. So one, two, three. This is going to get us our three equivalent methyl groups that integrate to nine. Here's our two. There's our one. So we end up with our 12 protons that we need. We've accounted for both oxygens and the acid. And we have our four unique type of carbon as well. So we end up with this carboxylic acid. And if we were to name this, we would find the longest carbon chain that includes the acid. So we have one, two, three, four. So it's going to be a butane derivative. We have two methyls at the three position. So we would name this three, three, dimethyl butanoic acid. And so in this screencast, we've looked at infrared, mass spectrometry, proton and carbon NMR data to elucidate the structure of C6H12O2, and then finally determine the name of that.